Hi, and you're now with the Forerunner Chronicles. It's a little late at night right now, but today we were out in Philadelphia giving some food out to the homeless people out there. And while we were out there, I decided to get out there and share the truth with some of those people out there that are homeless, strung out of drugs, things of that nature. So thought we would give you a little sneak peek of what was going on with us out there today. Whether you like it or not, as always, the truth is the truth. That God wants to place within the characters of humanity before he allows Satan and his demonic forces to sweep havoc on humanity. So the question you want to ask yourselves if you have a little bit of intelligence in your mind is, what is it? What is it that God wants to place within my character before he allows Satan to wreak havoc on this planet. Let's find out, right? Well, in the book of Isaiah, the eighth chapter and verse 16, the Bible says, bind up the testimony, seal the law amongst my disciples. Now, disciples are those that follow God, and he says he wants to seal his law amongst his disciples. Now, why is it so important? for God to seal his law in the character of his disciples. Let's find out. In the book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 144, the Bible says, thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. So God wants to put his law in your character so that you can have a character that reflects the truth and nothing but the truth. But let's go one step further with it. In the book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 151, the Bible says, My tongue shall speak of thy word. In fact, thou art near, O Lord, and all thy commandments are true. Wait a minute. God wants to put his law into your character so that you can have a character that reflects truth. But the only way he can do this is if you obey his commandments, which are true. Not seven of them, not six of them, but all ten of his commandments. That's the way you can have a character that reflects truth. But let's go one step further. Why is it important to keep all ten commandments which will make you reflect truth? Well, in the book of John, chapter 14 and verse 6, Jesus Christ himself said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. There it is. If you keep God's Ten Commandments, which is his law, you will reflect the truth, which means you will be just like Jesus. Amen. And God is waiting for humanity to reflect the character of Jesus Christ before he lets Satan destroy the masses. Now you might say this is nonsense because I've never seen God. God's never done nothing for me. Huh? But I am poor. I want to speak to you for 10 seconds, all right? When you look in the mirror, you see a human being. Now inside of your brain is millions of synapses. Am I right? Yes. And neural receptors that relay electrical that relay electrically encoded information at, a, at the speed of light, telling your heart to beat involuntarily, telling your lungs to respirate involuntarily. That is amazing. There is not one scientist on the planet Earth that can tell you how bones are formed in a mother's womb. That's because it's a miracle. If scientists were able to make a computer that can function like the human brain, it would have to be the size of the Empire State Building. Now it takes an intelligent being to make something like me be so small but talk so loud. Huh? That's a miracle. I'm a miracle. You're a miracle. Each and every one of you are a revelation of the truth that there is a God. Amen. So if there's a God, that means you need to serve him. Because in Revelation chapter 14 and verse 6, it says, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour 
of his judgment is come. It's time to get your lives right. You know they've been getting fat out here. See them over here, they getting fat right now. They don't want to care about God. The Bible said it'll be easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than a rich man to enter into the courts of heaven. Huh? So you might think that you're poor, but the God, the Bible said, blessed are they that are what? Poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. What do you have to lose? Your park bench? Huh? What do you have to lose in giving your heart to Jesus? Tell me, you have something to lose? I don't have nothing to lose. All right, I'll close my mouth. But I have one more thing I'd like to say before I leave, all right? You know, a few years ago, I used to be in the entertainment business. I used to do videos. I even did movies for New Line Cinema. But one day, God woke me up and he made me realize that you can't take anything to the grave with you. The Bible says, what good is it for a man to gain this whole world but to lose his soul? What good is it for you to get all the crack in the world you want to smoke and blow your brains out and then you lose eternity? What good is it to get high every day and then lose eternity? What good is it to have the biggest paying career out here and to lose your soul? What good is it? It's worth nothing. The Bible tells us to lay up our riches where moth and rust does not corrupt, where thief and robber doesn't break through and steal. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness and all these other things will be added up to you. I pray that somebody will be intelligent enough. And I say intelligent because they will take an ignoramus not to accept everlasting life for free. You know, this is ridiculous. <laughs> That's so stupid. How in the world are you not going to accept eternal life salvation, streets of gold, for free. May God help you to accept Jesus Christ because he loves you. He gave his life for you. He climbed up on the cross and poured out everything just so that one, one, one soul might surrender their life to him. He doesn't want to spend eternity without you. Without you, without you, of course without you. May God help you. I want to be there.